Hi, this is Tamara from Moogly, and today I'm going to demonstrate how to crochet the Bernat Crochet Mushroom Stuffy, which is a free pattern you'll find on Yarnspirations.com. To make this pattern, you will need two colors of Bernat Baby Blanket. I used weathered red and whipped cream. One ball of each should be sufficient. You'll also need a USK 6.5 millimeter crochet hook or whatever size gets you gauge. You'll also need a yarn needle. It's super helpful to have some stitch markers and safety eyes and stuffing to complete your mushroom stuffy. Let's take a look at the finished mushroom stuffy. As you can see, the crochet mushroom stuffy is made of just a few simple pieces. There is the base, there's the top, and there's the little dots that we add to the top to give it that mushroom look. Then you can add an optional face if you like to before you assemble the whole thing together. The finished stuffy, as shown here with Bernat Baby Blanket, is approximately 16 and a half inches tall by 11 inches wide at the widest point, and it's very, very huggable. Every piece you'll make for the Bernat Crochet Mushroom Stuffy starts with the magic loop. To make the magic loop, I start with the tail end of the yarn and I come in at least six inches or so, maybe a little bit more since this is a bulky yarn. Then I'm going to go over my non-hook hand forefinger twice towards me. Then I insert my hook under both of those loops, pull the one in back slightly forward, yarn over, and pull that loop through to lock the two loops together. From there, I can continue with our instructions. For the first round, we are going to chain one and then work a single crochet right into the ring. What we want to do is make sure we go under that tail end and the loop around our finger for each of the stitches that we work into the ring. This will allow us to bring that ring closed when we're finished. So there I've made my first single crochet. Now these pieces are also worked in a spiral. So what we want to do is we want to make sure to put a stitch marker in the first stitch of each round so that we don't lose track. Without that join and chain one at the beginning of the future rounds, it's very easy to lose track of what round you're working on and where you are in that round. So now I'll just go ahead and pull that loop back down and we'll continue with round one of our mushroom top. To finish this round, we work nine half double crochets right into the ring. So we yarn over, go right into that ring, making sure again to go over that tail, pull up our loop, yarn over, and finish our half double crochet. So that's the first one, and now we have eight more to work right into this ring. So at the end of round one, you should have 10 stitches total worked into the ring. We aren't going to join with a slip stitch. As I mentioned, we're working in a spiral, which means that when we start round two, we'll start by working right into the top of the first stitch of the previous round. What we want to do now is go ahead and pull this ring closed. You want to very gently pull on this tail. We don't want to pull so hard that we end up accidentally breaking the yarn, but we do want to close up that circle. I find that stabilizing it with my other hand, sort of pinching it as I pull through, helps a little bit with that effort. There we are, you can see it's getting a little bit smaller yet. So I'll pull just a little bit more there until it is completely closed. Then when I'm done crocheting, I will take my yarn needle and I will weave this end in both directions in this circle to help tighten up further and lock it in. So to continue with the pattern, let's go to round two. Round two says to work two half double crochets in each stitch around. So in round one, we had 10 stitches and at the end of round two, we'll have 20. So we just yarn over and go right into the top of that first stitch. So let's go ahead and take that stitch marker out and set it aside. We'll make that first half double crochet. And now I'm going to put the stitch marker in this stitch so that I know this is our first stitch for round two. Then I can work my second half double crochet right into that same stitch. And then work two half double crochets in each stitch around until you get to the end. So here's what the top of your mushroom should look like after round two. To continue with round three, we're going to work one half double crochet in the next stitch and two half double crochets in the stitch after that. And that's our repeat. One, then two, one, then two, all the way around for a total of 30 stitches. We still want to make sure to take the time to move that stitch marker up to the first stitch here. I should have pulled it out before I finished it, but that's okay. We just wanna make sure to move it up to the first stitch of every round as we go so that we don't lose track of where we're at in our pattern. So after that, I've got my first one and the first one, so I'll do two and the one after that. There's one and then two and then one in the next one. 
and two in the next one. And I'll just continue that all the way around for a total of 30 stitches. After round three, we continue working increases according to the written pattern until we get to round 10. So I'll see you at round 10. So here we are at the end of round three, but we're gonna jump ahead to round 10. Rounds 10 through 15 are all the same, worked even, which means one half double crochet in each stitch around. This will bring the top of our mushroom stuffy down to create that great cap shape. So we simply work one half double crochet in each stitch around, but we still want to make sure to move that stitch marker up to the first stitch of every round as you go. If you get lost on what round you're on, you can always, I like to go opposite where the stitch marker it is. It's a little easier to count there. And there it's, it's eight, you're able to count your rounds. We've got one, two, three rounds here. And of course you would have all the way out to round nine before you begin rounds 10 through 15. But again, those are just one half double crochet in each stitch around. Just make sure at the end, just as before, we do not join with a slip stitch. So after working 15 rounds for the top, you will have created this great shape. Full size, of course, unlike our miniature. So after round 15, then round 16 is simply closing it up and getting it ready to attach later. What we're going to do is we're going to work a single crochet in the next stitch, so that's our first marked stitch there. And I do like to go ahead and move that stitch marker up just so it's easy for me to find what I like to put in the back of my mushroom stuffy. I like to sort of match up the bottom and the top here um, on the back with those stitch markers. Not Maybe not perfectly, but close. So after we've single crocheted in the next stitch, we're going to slip stitch in the stitch after that. And then we're going to go ahead and break our yarn and fasten off. This allows us to come down from that spiral with a slightly gentler slope. And we can leave our end here and weave it in. And then we'll be ready to set it aside and make the spots. The pattern calls for making 12 mushroom top spots, the little dots on top of your mushroom. Of course, you can make as many as you like and place them is up to you. You just sew them on in sort of a random fashion until it looks good to you. But to make each one of those spots, it's exactly the same as round one of our mushroom top. We make a magic ring, one single crochet, followed by nine half double crochets, all right into that ring. Then we jump to what we did for the last round of our top, and we finish it off with a single crochet in that first stitch. And now we really don't need the stitch marker for this one. These spots will just get sewn on every which way. Then we are going to slip stitch in the stitch after that. And then we can simply break our yarn. What we want to do now though, is we want to make sure to leave a long tail that we can use to sew that dot onto our mushroom top. So just as a rule of thumb, I like to sort of go around the object. I'm, object I'm going to be sewing on two, sometimes three times, depending on, you know, just how complicated the sewing is going to be. And that always gives me a nice long length to sew it on with. So from there, I can simply pull up on that end. I'll go ahead and pull that right on through our stitch here. And then of course, I would weave in this center one to keep it out of the way. But then after doing that, I would just take my mushroom top and with those 12, sort of pin them on and decide where I want them to go. And then when it's time to sew them on, you'll want to use a large yarn needle like this one from Susan Bates. This is a Susan Bates finishing needle, and these are great for really bulky yarns like this, because as you can see, very easy to thread. And then we simply sew our dots onto our mushroom top wherever we like. Like I say, I just sort of randomly scattered them around the top when I was designing it. And of course we'd have that end already taken care of there. But to sew them on, you simply decide where you want it to be, insert your yarn needle right through that top there and then you can just pull it through oh there goes those little ends I haven't finished weaving in yet but then you can just go right under I like to go under those top two loops of each of those stitches and just go back and forth all the way around the outside round there of that spot now if you are making this stuffy for a child You'll want to sew these on particularly well, of course. The smaller the child, the more well sewn on they will need to be. But you can just take your time and sew on those mushroom spots however you like. And of course, you can change the sizes, uh, play with the sizes of the dots, play with their placement, play with how many. You can really make your mushroom your own as you sew these spots on. Once you've got all your spots sewn on, then it's time to make the mushroom stem which we will do using the same color as we used for the spots. The great thing 
about the mushroom stem is that it starts exactly the same way as the top and the spots. We start with a magic circle, make or a magic loop, whatever you want to call it, make that single crochet followed by nine half double crochets around, and then we just keep increasing until it's time to work even, just like we did with our top. So to begin the mushroom stem, rounds one through five are exactly the same as the mushroom top, and then rounds six through 20 are all worked even. You can see here we worked flat for those rounds one through five, and then working evenly, we created this really tall stem. When you get to round 21, that's when we do increases. Rounds 21, 22, 23, all increase slightly so that we have the same number of stitches then as we have in our mushroom cap so we can join them together. So you'll want to refer to the instructions to see how to increase for rounds 21 through 23. So after round 23, there should definitely be a flare at the top of your mushroom stem. Then it's time for round 24, which is the same thing we've been doing to finish off all our other pieces. Single crochet in that first marked stitch, slip stitch in the saft stitch after that, and then you can break your yarn and weave in your end. After that, we'll be ready to apply our face, stuff, and seam together. So when you finish your mushroom stem, it should be taller with a flare at the sides here, or right at the top rather. That will allow us to join it to the top. But before we do that, we want to go ahead and add the face if that's something you want to do. You can use safety eyes as I've used here, or you can use buttons or embroider them on with contrasting thread or yarn, whatever you like to do. If you do use safety eyes, I recommend that you take your time and figure out exactly where you want those eyes to be on your mushroom bottom before you add the backs to the safety eyes. These slide right over the posts and really lock them on. They aren't coming off. So make sure you know where your eyes want to be before you lock them in. In addition, you can add a mouth if you'd like. You can do that by cutting a length of contrast color yarn. It could be the same color as the top as I've shown in this pattern, or it could be whatever color you like. You could use some scrap yarn from your stash. Then you can simply embroider on the smile wherever you'd like it to be. I like to put the eyes on first so that it's a little easier to center that smile wherever I want it on my project. And then I simply work in small sections until I have the look I like. Sometimes it takes a couple tries to really get a smile that I like. So I'll end up picking that yarn out and doing it a couple times over, and that's totally fine. This is where you really wanna take your time and sew on a smile that is going to make you and your mushroom recipient happy. Of course, you can always leave the smile off if you like and have a more neutral expression or leave off that whole face for a simple mushroom, however you like to do it. <laughs> there went one of my eyes. I didn't wanna go ahead and lock this one in for this little demo project here, but obviously you'd want to lock those in beforehand. And then like I say, just take your time back stitching on that smile until you like how it looks. If you don't like how it looks, if it's coming out funny, you can always use your yarn needle to just pick that yarn back out, stitch by stitch, and redo it until you're happy with it. So after you've finished your mushroom top and your mushroom stem, it's time to stuff them and join them together. You can see here, after I woven my ends, I left them a little long and rather than trimming them off. You can do that too, or you can trim them off close if you'd like. It doesn't really make a difference since they'll be stuffed inside our mushroom. Then you'll want to go ahead and take your fiber fill or whatever you like to use for stuffing and stuff the bottom and top of your mushroom really firmly. Of course, you'll need a whole lot of fiber fill on your full-sized mushroom, and you can make it as firm or as soft as you like. I like to add quite a bit as it really helps with the shaping. Then, when you feel like you've got them about as stuffed as you want them, it's time to go ahead and line them up together. Now you can see here, I left that stitch marker in the first stitch of each of those final rounds. So I like to go ahead and put those together just so that it helps me line things up. Now, if you followed the written instructions, you should have the same number of stitches in the final round of your stem as you do in the final round of your top. So what you want to do now is bring in those stitch markers again and just start matching them up one to one. Now these two don't have to be perfectly next to each other. Like I say, I just try and keep them both in the back together. So you can go ahead and arbitrarily just pick a point to start joining them together. Just make sure that you have your favorite spots lined up over the face so that it looks as good as it can. Now I like to join together every few stitches or so all the way around as it really holds it together while I'll stitch through both of those layers. Additionally, as you line them up here with the stitch markers, you can add a little bit more fiber fill, sort of tuck it in around the edges as you close it up here, and then it'll be held in a little bit easier as you go too. So take your time and go up and ahead and line up all your stitches all the way around with your stitch markers, and then we'll stitch them together. 
Once everything's stuffed and joined together with those stitch markers, it's time to actually stitch them together. We're going to be doing two rounds and we want to come from the top towards the bottom. We're going to be working through both of those layers. So you can join with a single crochet or with a slip stitch, whatever you prefer. I'm going to go ahead and join with a slip stitch. What I want to do is find two matching stitches. So let's go to the two right before this stitch marker so we don't have to move it right away. We're going to go into that stitch in the top, find the matching stitch right there on the bottom, and then I'll bring in my yarn here. I will go ahead and yarn over and pull that loop right through both layers. Go ahead and drop that end there. I'm going to yarn over for a chain one, and then I'm going to single crochet right back through both of those layers. So I wanna go again through that stitch at the top and then that stitch at the bottom. And go ahead and make a single crochet. Then we're going to continue to do that all the way around. So now I'm gonna go ahead and move this stitch marker out of the way for our next stitch here. And then I go into the next stitch of the top and the next stitch of the bottom. Just take your time and really look and make sure you're going to that next stitch there. And then we go ahead and make a single crochet. So we just continue to do this all the way around the mushroom until you've worked all the way around for one round. Now here's the exception to the rule we've had for the rest of this project. We are going to go ahead and join to that first single crochet with a slip stitch when we've finished our first round of joining. But now our mushroom top and bottom are together. So we have just one more round of the joining round, which creates this really great lip you can see here on our finished mushroom, just like that. So we have one more round of single crochet. Simply chain one, single crochet in each stitch around and join when you get to the end, weave in your ends and you will have a finished Bernat Crochet Mushroom Stuffy. And that's how to crochet the Bernat Crochet Mushroom Stuffy. I hope you've enjoyed this video and remember you can get the free pattern on yarnspirations.com. Thanks so much for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe.